I am so glad I procrastinated on working on this video. Jagex just today announced that they will be banning all third-party clients moving forward. Everyone has a one-week grace period to switch over to Runelite before they begin swinging that ban hammer. They are also now allowing several extremely useful plugins to be transferred over to Runelite. Entity Hider Extended, that thing that hides dead NPCs, Shift-Click Walk Under, Left-Click Pickpocket, as well as various features from Socket. I fully expected them to ban clients, but had major concerns that they would forget about things like Entity Hider, which would make Inferno so annoying I would probably stop running it. Let's talk about what Runelite added. Entity Hider Extended is what the cheat plugin was called. This is now a setting under Entity Hider, a tick box that just is hide dead NPCs. This was the low RAM meme every Inferno speedrunner was talking about. This simply causes NPCs to instantly disappear upon killing them. This was practically necessary for anybody speedrunning Inferno or Gauntlet, as when an NPC dies, it would put the click box at the top of the menu and eat your clicks. Extremely annoying. It wastes a minor amount of time, but the main reason runners use it is how frustrating it is to take additional damage and lose time because you can't click or see the NPC underneath what died. I would not want to run Inferno without this. They did seem to directly copy-paste it from clients, which means it still has bugs with various multi-phase bosses. The main one is Ice Demon. He simply disappears when the fight starts. So hopefully they work on this and fix it. In the other client, the plugin I used, I was able to whitelist only Inferno NPCs, so I could avoid the various bugs with the plugin by only having it work on specific NPCs instead of toggling it constantly. So hopefully they at least implement something like that in Runelite. Shift-click walk under is next, and one I thought would never hit Runelite? Holding shift while right-clicking an NPC with the menu entry swapper plugin activated gives the option to shift-click walk here. If this is toggled on, you can now hold shift and their entire menu will disappear, allowing you to move freely underneath them. This is big for a lot of PVM, next for resets, P3 Verzik for tanking, bosses like Calfight Queen or Bandos where you often walk under them to avoid damage. The implementation is a bit clunky, and the other client holding shift simply removes all menus from everything, which would be a lot simpler. But even with its current implementation, this is a huge addition. This isn't really necessary anywhere, but it's such a nice QOL change for most bosses. Only place it was really necessary was manual next resets. Left click pickpocket is now in Runelite as well. Hold shift and right click on any pickpocketable NPC to change that option to the top one. This will not allow left click blackjacking as clients have been able to do in the past, but it will allow you to left click thieve things like elves and vires, which is very nice. You won't have to tinker with attack options for arty knights anymore either. You already could kind of do this by adjusting your camera and getting the menu to the bottom of your screen, but this is much simpler and just a nice QOL feature. The socket plugins I felt were due to get added to Runelite at any point, and now pretty much everything is here except for the crazy Sodaseg mazes, which was arguably one of the most busted cheat client plugins in the game, showing your entire team the maze, allowing the person chosen at Sodaseg to just run straight through. This is done with the party plugin. You pull it up on the sidebar and hit create party, this generates a password, which you can give to teammates at any content to show their HP, prayer, and now what their special attacks have landed as. This instantly visually shows what hammers have landed and how much total BGS damage was dealt, allowing you to efficiently lower boss's defense. This was used a ton in the Theater of Blood, but it's also great for chambers. This was a feature that almost every other MMO has, and should have been in the game ages ago. Transmitting information smoothly between teammates is very important for raiding in general and a great addition. Finally, they added monster true tiles to Runelite. This allows you to see exactly where a monster is at any given moment. This being considered cheating was one of the weirdest decisions to me, as we could see our own player's true tile, but not the true tile of monsters. This is incredibly useful anywhere monsters stall. Melees in Inferno is a great example, as often their true tile is completely off from where they actually appear to be. This will be greatly beneficial at Nex for resets as well, as we can actually visually see exactly where she is. Those are all the main features added to Runelite. These are all great additions to the game that I felt walked in that gray area, but should have been in Runelite from the very beginning. I'm incredibly glad I won't be called a cheater anymore for a plugin that makes the game work the way it should have. It was getting old. Additional features like shift click walk under and socket are just a bonus I thought I would never get to use. Jagex at the bottom of the news post asked if we wanted any other plugins pulled over. There's only one I wish wasn't lost, and that's a Neverlog. 
This plugin simply inputted a random keyboard input every few minutes to keep you logged in. Yeah, this is borderline botting, and giving the entire community access to it would probably tax the servers a bit. Alting becomes much more feasible with this plugin, so I'd love to see some compromise for this as well. Honestly, I feel the logout timer could easily be increased to something like 10 to 20 minutes without hurting the integrity of the game while still being manageable. If the concern is things like splashing or AFKing in Nightmare Zone, my suggestion would be to simply not log you out if your last click was not a red click. For example, your alt clicks a tile in chambers to hold the raid for you. He will never log out. You click a redwood tree, you finish chopping it, but now you will log out after five minutes have elapsed. This might have consequences on the servers. I know nothing. This is my feeble brain trying to come up with a solution that pleases everyone. For now, it's just going to be a little bit more annoying to alt. Also, while we're at it, on an unrelated note, can we just remove six-hour logs already? I assume this was originally an anti-botting mechanic or something, but it's just completely pointless. It causes headaches in team content requiring you to remember how long you were logged in, and warnings on everything to log out if you've been logged in a long time. I had a feeling Jagex would be moving this direction when they announced the Jagex launcher originally, but I was very concerned about how they would do it. This seems like a very reasonable laxation of the rules. Theoretically, this should reduce botting populations, at least temporarily, as most of these bots run on their own botting clients. There are still bots that run on Runelight, so don't expect these to go away completely, but they may be able to detect them more easily with this change and actually ban some more bots. They have finally drawn a clear line in the sand, bringing those plugins that Chi client users always mention as QOL over to RuneLight and banning the rest. This seems totally fair to me. Will Jagex actually punish people for this? Only time can tell. They've clearly laid out their intentions to ban anyone on a different client. It's likely they've developed some kind of system to detect other clients. It would not surprise me at all if Chi client devs find a way to spoof clients as RuneLight or something and get around this. Considering how hard it is for other games to run decent anti-cheat, it's likely Jagex have just started a new war similar to banning bots, where devs will be looking for cracks in security and trying to get around Jagex's measures. Either way, they're at least going to be doing something, which is a huge step from before where they banned pretty much nobody for doing this. My main fear is for the future with this update. Having all these clients is one of the main reasons I came to this game instead of RS3. Having the community in control of the clients has been a great boon for the game, but with some obvious problems. RS3 has absolutely zero third-party clients. Yes, their default client is a lot better than ours, but none of the weird plugins we have would ever see the light of day in RuneScape 3. Things like tile indicators or agility course obstacles being highlighted. Anything that adds arbitrary highlighting does not exist in that game. Now that Jagex have forced it down to RuneLight, the HD client, and their own, Adam has full control over the primary client. I'm worried this could stifle development for RuneLight and stifle creativity in general, as RuneLight is the only community client allowed currently. I could see this being a part of Jagex's long-term goal to get everyone onto their own client in the future. They are working on their own C++ client, which is an entirely new engine away from Java, which as an RS3 player is an obvious fear of mine. Their actions in the past have made it very clear as someone at least at some point wanted RuneLight gone. I really don't want to see that happen. These are just concerns of mine for the deep future. I really don't expect anything to happen like this for a good while. I could just see it causing problems down the line. I am fully on board with this update, but if it stifles PVM-related plugins from being developed in the future, that might cause problems. Plugins like Cox Editions or Scouter and the multitude of Tob plugins all found in the plugin hub improve the content and how we interact with it. They don't take away from it. If you're watching this as it goes up, I will be live on Twitch. I just recently finally obtained the Zuck helmet and as such, I will be pushing to hone the Inferno and get a sub 48 minute possibly and possibly a pillarless Inferno completion if I'm feeling frisky. Leave a like if you liked it and or subscribe. Thanks guys.